Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to send notifications based off dates of things. This could be items that need approval and have yet to be approved, so you'd like to send an early notification to them, to the approver that this should be approved. This could be something like an event that is happening and you want to send notification on the event date. Or finally, it could be a deadline that has been broken and the item has past due and you want to send people notifications to complete that item. So this is sort of the output of what we're going to get. I have an order list and basically I want to send people notifications two days before the order date to approve of the order so that they may be shipped out. This is my order list you can see here and today is October 24th and I would like all the items on October 22nd to be sent a notification to the approver, which is myself. So let's start making that flow. So I go to Power Automate, and here in the My Flow section, I will go and start a new flow from Instant Cloud. And we're going to name this Send Approver Notification Email. And we're going to manually trigger this flow. Great. So the first step we're going to say is we're going to pull the relevant items from this order list that are two days before today, because that's when I want to send it. So let's just use the get items action to get the items from SharePoint. We're going to use the get items with an S instead of get item, because we want all the items that are relevant. And here, type the SharePoint list name. You can search for it. This site address has been filled out. Now we get the list name, which is order list. And then in the advanced options, um, we want to provide a filter query. Because this get items will just give us all the items in the SharePoint list, but we want only the ones two days prior to today. So we need to find the column. So this is the column order date, but you can see there's a space and you can't really use spaces in the filter query here. We need the exact column name. So we, to get the exact column name, we're going to go to settings at the top, this little cog, list settings, find order date right here. And if you look above, you'll see the URL has the field equals order date without a space. Sometimes it might have a percent sign like this. It might be weird but you want to use exactly as it's shown here, which is for me just order date. Let's go back, settings, order list, and in our flow, we will say order date, and here we're going to put our filter query, which is going to be, I want uh, the 22nd, so today's the 24th, so I want all items in 22nd, so I want the order date to be greater than 10, 21, 20, 21. So it has to be greater than 21st, but end order date has to be less than 10, 23, 2021. So this means that it'll be greater than the 21st, but less than 23rd, meaning that it can only be on the 22nd. And now, just to test out how many items we got here, I'm going to do, I'm going to count how many items we got. So you can do that by using compose function. And in the inputs, we'll put the expression length. And in brackets, if you just click over here, it won't get rid of this. And then go inside the brackets, put the value, and hit OK. This will give us the number of items this get item says pulled. Let's save. Let's test it out manually. Okay, and you see here, this error query failed because I did not put it in single quotes. So let's go back, put this in single quotes. I believe you have to put it in single quotes. The only thing it accepts is numbers. Like if it's if this was a number field, I would say uh, my price would be greater than 100 and I don't have to put quotes. Let's test this out again with the single quotes. And there we go.
So the get items worked with this query, and we got three items, meaning it must be working because only three items here are on the 22nd. So now let's make this dynamic because let's say I, I run this tomorrow, it's still going to use the 21st and 23rd. It won't use 22nd and 24th, right? So we want to make it dynamic based on today's date. How do we do that is a very weird formula, which I will put in the description of this video. But basically, we want to use greater than, and the expression in the single quotes will be add dates, UTC now, today's date. And the day we want to add is, you remember this was the 21st, and today is the 24th. So to get that, I have to add negative three days, so three days before. So negative three. And then the format will be capital MM, lowercase dd, slash Y, 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 four Ys. You have to use capital MMs because the lowercase MM stands for minutes. There we go. Let me copy this formula. And here is the 23rd. And in here, I will put the same formula, but negative 1. Because to get 23, just minus 1 day from 24th. There we go. And let's test this out again. And remember to put single quotes between these functions. If you don't put single quotes, it'll break. And you can very easily do that by going to the end, putting a single quote, and then doing another like that. So let's test it out again. And let's see if it works. OK, perfect. We got the same number of items. And you can see here the filter query is the same. So now we've made it dynamically based off today's date. So now if, if I run this tomorrow, this will be 22nd, and this will be 25th. And this will pull me not items on the 22nd, but on the 23rd. OK. And you can customize and play around with this, add, use different sort of dates to come up with whatever you want. Maybe three days from now, maybe five days from now. Maybe you don't even need add days. Maybe you just put zero days, and you just want um, today's date, meaning equals. So then you would say order date. If you just wanted today's date, you'd get rid of all this. You put order date equals, and then just put uh, today's. Add days, zero. And then it will put this. And it would only get you um, all items on today. But I want all items before two days from now. This is what I'll run. Next, we're going to send an email to the approver myself on all the items that need to be approved. So we're going to use a send email action right here, send email v2, send it to myself. Subject of the email will be, and the body will be, and we need these items in a certain format to let's show over here. So what we're going to do is call another action, create HTML table. from the value above, get items. And we can use the automatic columns. However, this will bring in all the columns, such as ID, approval date, approval quantity, and even hidden columns. If you go over here, all these, um, it is not so useful. I prefer using custom columns. And let's say I just want the name, order, price, and the order date. So. I can do name of order, price, and date. Now you can see name of order doesn't have spaces because it won't let me put spaces. How you fix that is you click on header, you go to expression, and in single quotes put your title, name of order. And there we go. And the value we want, if I go to dynamic contents, will be if I just search name of order right there, the price, and the order date. And there's my table. And now if I go to send email, I'm going to use is a, I could just put the HTML table output. This will give me the HTML table that I want. Um, and let's test this out first. And there we go. You can see 
there is my order list, my order table. However, I want it sort of in this format, as you can see. So I'm going to paste the exact syntax or expression in the description for you guys. But right now, I'll just show you how to use it. So you guys will go into the body and go to the expression and paste whatever I put in the chat and hit OK. And as long as your title for the HTML table is called create HTML table, this will work. If not, you can go inside of it and then sort of change the um, over here where it says create HTML table to whatever it says over here for you guys. And now let's test it again. And there we go. We got our new prettier looking table that the approver can review. And final step, because we don't want to run this manually every day ourselves, we actually want it to run every day by itself and send an email on a certain time. So I'm going to delete the trigger flow at the top and we're going to use something called schedule. And this we can set up uh, however many times it runs, but usually we're going to run it every day because that's how this works. So every day is a frequency and show advanced you can sort of show at these hours. So depending on your time zone, change the time zone up here. So I'm going to say negative 5 Eastern. Now this should be 9 a.m. Exactly. So every 9 a.m., let's say tomorrow it runs, it's going to check is anything within a past two days from the 25th, which is 23rd, and it will get nothing. So it won't. It will still send an email. That's another problem we have. So now we need to make sure that it only sends an email if we have uh, items over here. We have anything. Because if we don't return anything from the get items, it shouldn't send an email because there will be no outstanding orders. So let's add before this a condition. And this will be is our compose the length get items is greater than zero. If yes, we drag this into the yes. That's it. Now I'll test this out. As you can see, it ran. Um, it got three items. It created the table. It was greater than zero, so it sent an email right up here. So tomorrow it'll run, and there's no items on the 24th, 23rd, so it won't send any email. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you understand the power of flow and how you can leverage it to automate your tasks, get people notified on things, work well with Power Apps and SharePoint and all the other Power Platform tools. And also, I hope this video helps you understand more about the filter query and more technical side of Power Automate and how to leverage it in the future much better.